Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca. He invented the Ink Canadian Insider Index, which is used by the Horizons Canadian Insider Index ETF, a 2017 and 2018 fund data Fun Grade A Plus Award winner. His website, CanadianInsider.com. Welcome back to the show, Ted. Well, thanks for having me back, Jim. Ted, when I first turned on Bloomberg Television this morning, all the markets were back in the green and strongly churning along, recovering the losses from yesterday. And then at the end of the markets, I turned the TV set back on again and everything was down dramatically. What happened in that five-hour period? Jim, what uh, transpired is we had the President of the United States uh, returning to the tariff playbook, threatening more tariffs uh, against China uh, if it didn't uh, bring more to the table uh, in terms of negotiations, and that's what sent stocks uh, tumbling and sent gold flying. And you can understand the reasons for both. I think, the uh, of course, the stock market doesn't like it because uh, – you know any any sense of, of a prolonged trade war? I think there was a lot of hopefulness. Uh, you know, is one is a, is a pleasant way of describing that point of view uh, that there would be a, a a trade truce at some point, a trade deal. However, I've never been a big believer that there would be a meaningful trade deal, and I think we're seeing just how difficult it's going to be. And the markets, a lot, a lot of players in the markets are going to have to kind of get their heads around that reality. And we've had it dismissed for so long by, I mean, you talk about business television, you know, I, uh, I can't tell you that, you know, I, I, you know, I, I try not to watch it too much, but, uh, once in a while you turn on, every time I turn it on, there's always somebody on there saying that this whole trade spat between China and U.S. is a nothing burger, and doesn't really matter. Well, if it doesn't really matter. Then uh, that you know that line of thinking uh, is going to have to come up with another explanation of what happened today. But it, it does matter, and the reason why it matters is because it inflicts uncertainty uh, in, in terms of capital budgeting, in terms of you know how companies are going to are going to invest and how they're going to operate in many cases globally companies. So yes, it's, you know, no matter where you sit on whether this is a good strategy or not that Trump is doing, it does involve uncertainty. And I mean, that's all part of his negotiating strategy and it's had now an impact on the market. So that's, that's been bad for stocks in the U.S. Now Canadian stocks outperform. This is a theme we've talked about. It's a theme that we've written about on our CanadianInsider.com website. People can go to our Insights newsletter. But the fact of the matter is that Canadian stocks have been doing pretty well during these trade war episodes. And in today, you know, the Canadian Insider Index, it fell, but it didn't fall as much as uh, as the uh, mid-caps in the U.S. fell. Uh, U.S. Uh, stocks uh, in the U.S. fell over 1%, uh, whereas uh, the uh, the in Canadian Insider Index, it, it fell about 33 basis points. It's less than a third of a cent. So, you know, yeah, maybe it's a bit of a cold comfort that it didn't fall as much. But the fact of the matter is there was a wide performance gap between Canadian mid-caps and U.S. mid-caps. So, you know, the U.S. market is starting to feel the heat of this trade war. And I can tell you there's a huge amount of complacency in the market that the U.S. market is the place to go to. It's a senior market, most liquid market. Forget about Canada. Forget about you know, all these other markets just go into the U.S. market. But well, so far, up until 2019, that's worked. 
But now that we have this trade war going on full blown, uh, you know, I, I don't think the U.S. markets fully priced that in. Now, you know, is, is it going to be, uh, is it something that tips the market into a, a major bear market and a, and a major downturn? I don't know. I, I wouldn't predict that. But what I, I would suggest is that there's a lot of complacency that still has to be squeezed out of U.S. Uh, valuations and U.S. Th- prices. So I think we're going to have an opportunity <laughs> to see that in August, you know, which is a nor- normally a horrible month for liquidity in any event. So uh, I, I, I think you know you got to strap on your seatbelts, especially if you're if you're uh, overweight the U.S. market and have you know been riding that market all the way up. It's you know and that's been a great trade. It's been a great place to be. And those and you know and those uh, investors who who have overweight the U.S. for the you know for the past almost decade have done very well. But uh, you know all good trades come to an end, Jim. It, it'd be nice if they didn't. But uh, uh, at some point, circumstances change, and I think. December 1st of last year was when things started to change, when when Trump issued an ultimatum to uh, President Xi of, of China that you either do what we say or we're going to throw on more tariffs. I think that was the start of the real hostilities between the two major pow- powers, uh, trading powers, and, you know, now things are boiling up again. So it's getting serious you know, the, the U.S. has taken a position now that it's not going to be easy to back down on, and that is, you know, come to the table or we're going to put on more more tariffs and come to the table, I believe, quickly. Now, I haven't I haven't read all the details because I was out for part of the part of the morning, but I believe uh, the idea is for China to come with something substantial um, by the end of the month. So we'll have to see if that strategy works. I, I think it's based on an assumption that China is going to blink. But I would not build that. I would not. Uh, I would not bet a lot on that assumption. I think the the Chinese have already, uh, from their point of view, already stomached a fair amount of pain, and I, they'll, in their calculations, they'll probably think, well, we can do, we can we can take a little bit more pain because when we look and when we see the U.S. market, it hasn't really had much pain. So let's uh, let's take our little bit more pain here, and we'll see what kind of pain <laughs> happens in the U.S. So. Uh, I, I don't think this is a this is a very this is a very concerning development. I, I hope the market shakes it off. That would be great. That would because it would it would show that that global trade and global growth can can deal with the skirmish uh, between these these two major powers. So the next few days will be important. Uh, unfortunately, today was not a great day. Uh, we had a nice bounce in the energy markets earlier in the week. They tested their Christmas lows and, and in many cases went below their, their Christmas Eve lows last week in Canada and the U.S. followed the next day on Monday. But then they, there was a sharp bounce back, a sharp bounce back on Wednesday, I believe, uh, and it's all been reversed on Thursday. So tomorrow will be, uh, you know, an important day. There's a lot of data coming out that could move markets. So, what we'll be we'll be paying real close attention on is how the oil market behaves because it is the most economically economy sensitive commodity in general. How will it behave uh, in the next few days, and how will stocks like uh, Western Canadian Bank uh, uh, behave? The um, or, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Canadian Western Bank behave because uh, that that stock is highly sensitive to the oil patch in Canada. It's also ho- highly sensitive to uh, the Canadian consumer. It it had broke it it broke out on Fed Day. It broke over thirty dollars, but it gave it just about all of that back today. So a lot of damage was done today, uh, and it was in the second half, as you said, it was in the second half of the day. So it, today was a uh, you know a, a very bad start to August, and August is a challenging month at the best of times. So hopefully, hopefully things will kind of stabilize here, and everyone will go on a holiday, and everything will kind of simmer, uh, you know, just sort of uh, you know go on the back burner. But uh, I, I brace uh, investors are going to have to brace themselves for I think. Uh, an uptick in volatility here and uh, some some more surprises. So, uh, yeah, uh, a very concerning start to August, but good for gold, good for the gold market. Gold bounced back. And, um, and Ted, uh, we'll uh, talk about that. We'll talk about gold right after the break. 
Grand Portage Resources Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource indicated and inferred of 860,000 ounces in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the U.S., AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. So what's the picture for gold and other precious metals? Well, it was interesting. Heading into the Fed meeting, there was a lot of chatter that, oh, well, gold's going to sell off on the news uh, when the Fed cuts rates, which it did. But it didn't sell off that much. I think, you know, it pretty much held uh, held above uh, $1,400 an ounce. You know, maybe it, uh, maybe there was some markets where it, it dips very slightly below that. I don't think so. Uh, you know, I think it pretty much held and so the question was, well, what does it do today? Well, uh, obviously, with the help of Mr. Trump, it, it soared. And why did it soar? It, it soared more than just this whole sort of uncertainty factor with the trade. It soared because of, I think, what uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed uh, chief, said at his press conference on Wednesday when he was asked, well, what would it take for you to cut more rates? It's cut rates more. And one of his, you know, to paraphrase the answer was, well, if the trade uncertainty were to pick up, well, lo and behold, we did not even have to wait, uh, 20, you know, more than 24 hours. For, uh, it may have been 26 hours, but it was, with, it was within uh, a day or a bit of that press conference. And here we had the President of the United States upping the ante in the, in, in the trade war. So that's why gold flew higher in part, uh, because the Federal Reserve Chairman said, "Well, if we, got, if you know, if the trade tension got uh, got any tighter and tougher, you know, we'd look at cutting rates." And, and he, gold loves that. So here we are, off to uh, off to uh, you know new uh, new levels here, which uh, is going to catch a lot of people's attention. People who don't normally normally uh, trade gold, normally invest in gold, you know. And I think this is a, a topic we've talked about in the past. In there's so so much of this market is driven by algorithms, but another part is driven by other people's money managers. Whereas, you know, these these are a huge pension fund, mutual fund managers who get paid, Jim, to invest your money. You know, if you have a mutual fund or your pension plan, uh, can, you know, you know, like for example, the Canada Pension Plan, we're all members of that. Well, there's professional money managers who manage that plan, and so just you know, just generally, the whole pension industry. Uh, the management industry, really, those managers are not looking to be rocket star, rock stars. They're looking to keep their jobs and, you know, because they, they tend to be paid very well. They just don't want to lose their jobs. So they stick pretty close to the herd. Well, if the whole herd starts, you know, oh, looking over at that pat, that gold pasture where there aren't very many cows, you know, there's only, you know, those the crazy gold bugs and a few others, you know, a few other hedge fund managers who are, you know, those wild, you know, wild hedge fund managers over there. But for, for the most part, these other people, money managers, aren't there because the, the, the herd hasn't been there. All their, all their, their competitors and all the other pension funds aren't there, and all the insurance funds, you know, they're not there, and the mutual funds, they're not there. All the big ones, they're not. You know, some of them will be, and I, and I, and I imagine the number of your listeners have actively, you know, done their research and found some funds that have exposure, but the vast majority of these large funds, large institutional funds, you know, are not into the gold space. And once they start to see that it's, you know, the herd is starting to move in that direction, there could very well be a stampede uh, uh, over there because the career risk uh, of not being there becomes so high. So it's a kind of, a, unfortunately, it's people, you know, kind of, Moving into gold for, I would argue, the wrong reasons. You're moving there because you want to keep your job. You're not moving there because you've, you know, you've understood 
how it can help. But, you know, it is what it, the dynamics are what they are in the market, and human behavior is, is what it is. And with a lot of these professional money managers, the bottom line is, will they lose their job if they go into an investment where no one else is? And as more and more institutional dollars go into gold, you're going to have to see even more and more institutional dollars go into gold because they don't want to miss out. It'll be FOMO on the institutional money manager side that cannot, from a career risk perspective, take the chance that at the end of the year, they're going to have to go to their committees and go, no, we don't have any gold exposure. Well, why is that? Well, it doesn't pay a dividend. Well, but all you have... You have, you have, you know, 13, 15 trillion dollars of, of bonds, investment grade bonds in the world that don't, that, that pay negative interest rates. Why are you worried about, about gold not paying an interest rate? You know, so these professional money managers are going to actually have to do some hard thinking about their gold positions and it's going to be tough for them to, but when they see their competition moving to gold, they're, they're just going to have to go. They're not going to, you know, it's going to be a survivalist move into the gold and gold stocks as well. And so it, it's looking pretty good for that space. It's something we, I believe we talked about two weeks ago. And now things are lining up, uh, from a behavioral point of view, uh, that, uh, you know, in, unless we see a very, very quick back down on the trade front, a very, very, you know, either the Chinese, I'm wrong in the Chinese blink or, or the Americans, uh, you know, the, the Trump administration, they go for a, you know, more or less a, uh, a symbolic deal just to get the thing done before before the election season heats up. Unless we get one of those two outcomes in the trade in this trade war, you know, you, you, these these other people, money managers, they're just going to have to bite their bite their their lip and buy some gold stocks, and they're not going to like it, but they're going to do it, and they're going to do it because they want to save their their jobs. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, what are big-name insiders buying in Canada? We've noticed a big pickup in the oil patch. We've seen some pretty notable trades uh, and you can go to our blog on canadiansider.com where we've uh, been looking at you know some of the developments there that we've seen and what we also noticed was a big pickup in uh, insider buying in the energy area in the US we've had peak insider exploration exploration and production stock buying in the US which to us is consistent with a bottoming in those stocks because they, they've been hurting too, not just the Canadian oil patch, but the U.S. You know, they, the U.S. Uh, oil and gas stocks haven't been doing great either. So we have the makings of a potential bottom. Now, that was before the Trump, uh, the Trump tariff stakes game that he played today. So we'll be very, very. Uh, interested to see how crude oil behaves in the next few days uh, if crude oil can stabilize here it would be a positive because uh, it would mean that the global economy is okay uh, and that there may be this may be a bottoming process here in the oil and gas stocks uh, however uh, we live in very interesting times with uh, mr. Trump in the White House taking on the Chinese and uh, anything could happen so could crude oil break down again uh, anything's possible i wouldn't want to bet but under sort of average uh, circumstances uh, we would take the action that we've seen in in the 
Canadian oil patch stocks and what we see insiders doing as a positive development suggesting that there's, you know, the, the chance that we've got a significant uh, support level here for them. But now we'll get to test how strong that support is. Ted, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me back, Jim. My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of IncResearch.ca, his website, CanadianInsider.com. If you have any questions for Ted or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.